All right, let's see if we can start this over again. It looks a little funky um, on my side. So there we go. That looks different. If you are tuning in for the first time, tell me where you're from. Let me know where you're from. Uh, put a comment in here. I'm not sure who is going to actually be able to get on here just because it's the week before Christmas. It's a little crazy. So let's just see um, how many people come on. So far, I don't see anyone on here yet. So I'm hoping everyone can jump on. Let me just, let me just check one thing here. Okay. So I wonder, can you guys see me? You guys could see me and I couldn't see you for whatever reason. I'm not really sure. Um, so I'm going to wait for you to hop on again. I think I should be live here. Let's see. Can anybody see me? I'm just going to, you know what? I'm just going to start the training. If you guys can't see me, I'm just going to start the training anyways. Because it looks like you had seen me from before. Um, and now it's just, we're just having some tech difficulties unbeknownst to me because this Facebook is not my platform. Okay, if you guys can see this, you want to jump on the one you want to jump on the one that I just got on. So I'm going to do I'm going to do this training. Let's see. Let's see Laurie, if you can see me, just say hi. I'm going to say hi first. I think Facebook is having a glitch here. Facebook having a glitch. Okay, we got I have one viewer. I can see it. Maybe you're all going to transfer over here in a second. Hopefully you do. If you can see me, say hi. Tell me where you're from. Um, like I said, I know that there are a lot of people that are cleaning tonight, so I, we may not be able to be on. Okay. All right. Hi, Natalia. Sorry, I'm going to start. Um, I It was just it, the whole back the whole back thing just looked totally different. So I was like, am I on the right one? Am I on the wrong one? Um, but it looks like you guys can see me. So I am going to start. Um, I'm excited to talk about tonight's training because I love talking about employees. I love talking about how you need to master the employees to get where you want to go, right? For those of you that don't know me, my name is Cheryl Hazard. I founded this group is called Sisters Who Scale. I help cleaning business owners learn how to hire their dream teams, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, master the art of selling, and how to execute in your business to do the result-producing activities that actually work that help you scale your company. I also own Made Bright Cleaning, Bright Power Washing. You can check me my company out online, madebright.cleaning. That's B-R-I-T-E dot cleaning. Um, I no longer physically clean. I have them for a while. I did for a long time. I run the business. I took my business from zero because I was a solo cleaner. I started it myself to over $700,000 a year and growing. I did it in less than four years. Um, the best part about that is that I only work the cleaning business now about 20 hours a week, right? How did I do that? I tell everyone I talk to, everyone I coach with actionable steps, with leverage systems and focused focused, focused execution, right? That's how I did it. So what do I do as a business coach, as a cleaning business coach specifically? Well, I teach you to do the same things I'm still doing today, depending on where you're at and where your goals are. There can be some variables there, right? Usually the first things we start with are hiring, writing your ads. Everyone wants to know how to hire that perfect person. There's no perfect person out there, but hiring is truly an art. It's a skill of patience a skill of people and a skill of sales. And not everyone that owns a cleaning business has those skill sets developed yet. And that's where I come in, okay? I've been in your shoes. I've made bad decisions. I've also made very good decisions. I know what works. I know what doesn't work. Um, and I give my clients the exact formulas that they need not only to succeed, but to do it faster and better. That's why my clients are getting amazing results. Um, so let me just check in to see if this, everyone's on here. Hi, Victoria. Hi there. Hi, Tamika. Um, if you're tuning in, say hi real quick. Uh, there was some tech glitch. So my back end usually shows me um, when people are joining and it wasn't showing me when anyone was joining. So I was panicking thinking that it wasn't working. So I started a new video. So I apologize um, for that. So who here has said the phrase people don't want to work? 
I've said it. I said it a few years back when I, you know, started to say to myself, shame on yourself, stop making excuses for yourself, right? <laughs> Raise your hands if you said this. If you, if you have said people don't want to work, put your hand in the air. I'm sure we've all said this, especially after COVID, because things change. But here's the deal. If you continue to say that, you're going to sound like a crybaby in a poor sport saying, oh, saying that, right? And the bottom line is the unemployment rate in this country is at an all-time low. As of March, which I, and I know it's still very similar, the unemployment rate was 3.5%. In America, that's low. So everyone is working, right? They're not just, they're just not working for you. So that's what we need to swallow. You need to swallow that pill. Why aren't they working for you, okay? Why aren't they applying to your job? Why isn't the phone ringing off the hook when you place an ad? There's got to be a reason. I am the type of person that always looks inward to see what can I do, what can I change, what mistakes have I made, how can I do it better? You have to adapt the same mentality because as a CEO, you're a problem solver, a fixer. You are a fixer. You wake up every day and you're going to fix problems. You're going to fix the schedule. You're going to fix payroll. You're going to fix the client complaints, right? You're, you're fixing stuff all day the time so why are people applying but then not showing up for the interview that's a different issue maybe it's just a personal issue it has nothing to do with you right or ready grab your seat maybe it's you maybe you're the reason why people don't want to work for your company now I never intend to sound harsh or offensive ever that's obviously never my intention or the case with me but what I am here to teach you is to look inward first stop looking outward stop blaming everyone else for your problems okay stop making excuses because all the excuses are doing are prolonging your success so is making like how do I say this is making you go down this rabbit trail of tr joining every other negative Nelly out there like there's some cleaning forms out there that they just start trash talking and stuff, right? Don't go that way. Don't be negative, right? Don't be negative out there. Nobody wants to work. Wah, wah, cry, baby. All right, you got to fix your problem. you got to fix your problem because everyone's working, right? Okay, so we're just not going to say that phrase anymore. We're going to get it out of our system. Um, you know, they, those people, they just love the negative stuff. They like to blame outside forces and, it, you know, they blame outside forces, outside forces and reasons because... They're mediocre at what they do. I said it. That's it, right? That's where they can justify them not having the success they want. Right? As harsh as that sounds, if you can mentally get to that point, there's no place to go then up. Then you're going to fix it, right? You fix it and you make it better, right? I don't sit in my office and complain and say nobody wants to work because there's plenty of people out there have families to support especially this inflation is crazy right there's single mothers the people need jobs right people need to work right I was one of them for a long time but I never made excuses for myself that's one thing I never did I went after it I stopped the pity party and I figured shit out so let's look at the hard question right I always call the starting point ground zero looking inward which is so hard to do sometimes but trust me when I tell you, it is the only place to start from if you really want to change and if you really want your freedom. All right, I'm going to check in and see who else is on here. Said that. Hi. And I know a lot of people are probably going to watch this on replay just because it's the week before Christmas and it's just crazy. If you're still in the field, um, I saw on Facebook, I felt so bad. One girl, all her whole staff had COVID. I felt awful. Oh my God. Um, so people are going to watch this on replay. So number one, do you think you're a good boss? Give an honest assessment of yourself, right? It's always hard to look inward. Do you think you're a good boss? This is one of the most difficult skill sets to learn, and you will have to learn in your entire career how to be a good boss, right? You have to be friendly, but you have to be stern and commanding at the same time. You have to do things that make them respect you, but that also fear you a little bit, right? And if you're in the field with them, it can be very tricky. And not only have I experienced this myself when I was in the field, 
but I hear it all the time from my clients. So if you're always joking around with them and meeting them on their level all the time, this could eventually backfire on you. And we actually were talking about this last night in the Drop Them Off and Scale Accelerator that I have on Tuesday nights. We were talking about this exact reason with Jessica Brandt, one of my newest um, clients who I just absolutely love. Jessica, if you're listening to it, I absolutely love you. Um, I love your energy, but she was having this problem because um, she was in the field cleaning. She's meeting them on their level, right? Now they don't, they don't want to do stuff and follow the rules and stuff like that, right? So a lot of times they think if you're cleaning with them, they're your equal and they're most certainly not your equal. You're their boss. It's almost like being a parent, right? I think I said this exact same thing. Um, it's almost like being a parent. Like you want to be your child's friend at the end of the day you're the disciplinarian, the teacher, and the rule maker, so you're not their friend. And we get caught up in trying to be so nice so that you'll, they'll stay with you, right? When in actuality, this can backfire and make them leave because they think they're on the same level, but they aren't. And you've actually done this, not intentionally. No one intentionally does this, but you've done this to make them feel this way, right? This is a tears of management thing. Um, and one of the things I teach my clients when they're having staff issues like this, okay? So how do you create a tier of management within your company, okay? Like how do you, how do you do that? It's one of the things I teach. There's different levels, there's team leads, there's quality controls, there's managers, there's officers, there's all kinds of people, right? Um, if anyone's interested in hearing about that, DM me um, on the side. So ask yourself this question are you a glass half full person or a glass half empty or are you a what now person or what's next like oh my god what's gonna happen now you know what i mean like when something bad happened you just expect something else bad to happen you want to get rid of that energy because your employees can pick up on this they can feel this energy so if you're running around with all this pent up negativity, I'm a jaded boss energy thing, which I've talked to a few people that I can feel this energy off them, right? Because they're tired, they're exasperated, exhausted. People, people suck sometimes, right? And this can no doubt drive them away, right? You will drive them away in the interview, you scare the crap out of them, they won't want to work for you, and you will drive them away when they're working for you, and they're going to go find another job. Because at the end of the day, what matters to an employee? A good boss, a good staff, and they like coming to work. That's what matters. We're not giving out $100,000 salaries, ladies. We're paying them the same amount that they can go work at Dunkin' Donuts. So why are they better Why are they better working for us than they are for Dunkin' Donuts? So think about, think that through, okay? A next, another one is a massive one. Your company culture. What does your company culture look like, right? We have a different workforce now that we had 20 years ago, 10 years ago, or five years ago. Good, bad, or indifferent, it's just different, right? People want mental health days. They want work-life balance. And to you and me, because we're bosses, we don't see things that, that way, right? Because we'll go work you know, 80 hours a week for our company. Um, we have so much responsibility on our shoulders that we just tend to plow through stuff because we have no choice and stuff won't get done. So we have a built up tolerance, right? And we'll less likely need these types of days for yourself. You just get tougher and you think it's a good thing overall because it teaches you strength and stamina, right? So an employee is an employee. They don't have a vested interest in your company as much as you want them to. They don't, right? They don't have that. You have that. So even if you have a, com a company culture, because a lot of companies don't have one, and they expect their staff just to show up and work without any incentive, they can do that anywhere, and they can probably get $2 more an hour, $3 more an hour. So your employees are not going to work as hard as you because it's not their company, okay? This, think of this. You're actually working for them now think about that for a second. They're not working for you. You're working for them. But in return, they allow you the time freedom to stop cleaning. That's how that thing works, okay? It's a two-way street. And until you get this concept, you will struggle to keep staff. You have to do more for them than they do for you. But in turn, 
they're going to give you your freedom which is what we're all after here so building a strong company culture is crucial for the success and sustainability of any organization you can't have a scaling business without one right a positive well-defined culture helps attract retain you know like helps attract and retain the best people out there it fosters employee engagement and contributes overall to the organizational success is this making sense everyone let me check in is this making sense glory is a great boss glory is a great boss glory is a great person glory is in the mastermind that we're having a call on friday although aramis thought it was wednesday but it's friday <laughs> so crazy um all right if this is making sense say making sense just want to make sure um do you have core values for your company? Why do you need core values? They identify the values that are most important to your organization. So these values should guide decision making, the behavior, interactions within the company, right? So you have to lead by example. So company leaders, bosses, CEOs, same thing play a very significant role in shaping the culture. So you have to demonstrate these values and behaviors you want to see in your employees. So it starts with you first. So your actions will set the tone for the rest of the organization, right? Example, your reaction to ethical issues. If there is a theft in your company, someone steals from a client, if you let it go and don't fire that staff immediately, guess what? You are setting the tone that that is acceptable behavior within your company they will immediately lose respect for you. That's it, your company's gone. You might as well just fire everyone and hire brand new staff. You cannot do that. You have to lead by example. When someone steals and you have proof, they're gone. I don't care if you lose 10 houses that week, they are gone. You have to show the rest of your staff what your values are, what your integrity is, because if you do that, they're gonna have much respect for you and they're gonna stand by you, okay? That's a big one. That is a big one. Don't let anyone say in your company that you, that you know is stealing from clients because you have to cover the schedule. Screw that. You don't get to cover the schedule. That toxic person's got to go before they get hauled off to the police station, right? So that's how you have to hand or, ha handle that type of stuff. That'll bring your organization back 10 steps if you don't handle that correctly. Um, involving employees. So get input from your employees when defining or refining your company culture, right? So this inclusivity helps employees feel a sense of ownership, feel a sense of connection to the culture. So ask them for, for suggestions, have a suggestion box, box. Where do they wanna have their company Christmas party? We did that this year, right? We did that. Um, Jay, my husband, didn't wanna go where they went, but they all picked it and they were so happy and, and he ended up being happy. This was last Saturday. Um, but he was like, why do they want to go there? I'm like, it's not your party. It's the employee's party. So we went where they wanted to go, and we, we all had an amazing time. So um, do you bring breakfast in the morning? Munchkins, bagels, anything like that, right? Ask them what they want. Give them a choice. Send them out a message, a Slack message if you're on Slack. Do you want bagels or cream cheese this morning? Do you want munchkins? Do you want breakfast sandwiches? Something like that, right? This will take you a long way if you do nice things like this, right? They're milestones. They're just little gestures that are gonna make them feel important. They get to choose, they get fancy bagels, they want donuts, they want this or whatever, right? Now, you probably all know, if you've been watching my lives for a while, that I'm a big communication person, right? Communication is number one. It's number one with your staff, it's number one with your clients, it's number one with everyone in the world, right? Relationships break down when there's not proper communication. 100%, 100% of the time, we know that, right? So you have to clearly communicate the company's mission, the company's vision, and the values to all the employees, right? Regularly share your updates on company goals, your successes, your challenges, be open and transparent with them to a point you don't have to tell them everything right there's certain secrets you want to keep in management okay but this is going to build trust between the employees to you they're going to trust you they're going to feel part of the team these people are giving you their freedom you should be worshiping them to a certain degree you don't want to kiss their ass but to a certain degree right tell them how good of a job they're doing ask them their opinion this isn't the you show 
right? This isn't the Cheryl show on my company. It's my staff. It's all about them, right? So you have to show, you have to get this. You have to get this, right? Because if you don't, you're still going to be in the field. You're still going to be in the field if you don't get this, right? Your employees give you the freedom. So when you hire and you onboard, you want to hire and onboard with your company culture in mind. So examples, during the hiring process, assess candidates not only for their skills, but for their cultural fit. Are they awkward or will they fit? Will they fit with Amanda? Will they fit with Liz? Like, will they fit with your people? When I hire and I look at the potential candidate, I look at them with my other staff in mind. Will they fit in, right? That's a big thing that you need to do. Unless you have all solo cleaners, which that's kind of different, um, you know, you need to hire for personality as well as skill, right, when out in the field. You need to celebrate their successes, acknowledge and celebrate both individual and team successes, right? When they get a review, when they get, you know, a great tip. I do all that stuff. We have a tip board in the office. We write down all the tips. I see all the money coming in, right? That's, that's big, right? Your recognition and their rewards, right? Acknowledge if you if you do bonuses or reward employees, acknowledge your employees in front of the other employees who exemplify the desired culture you want, right? Recognition can be formal, it can be informal, and it reinforces the behaviors you wanna see more of. So when one employee sees another employee getting a Google review, getting a big tip or whatever, she or he is going to want to do the same thing. And all of a sudden you see them working a little bit harder in that house, cleaning, making sure the chrome is shining and nothing's left behind and the toilet isn't, you know, the toilet's cleaned and stuff like that, whatever. They're going to work a little harder because they want recognition too. Is that making sense, right? Now, on the other side, let's talk about, that's all the work stuff. Let's talk about promoting the work-life balance because this is a thing that didn't exist 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, right? Encourage a healthy work-life balance. You have to recognize the importance of personal time and the well-being of your employees, right? This can definitely enhance their job satisfaction, and their overall happiness. You want them to be happy when they come to work. You don't want them coming in grumpy because that's just going to translate into the houses. They're going to bring that negative energy into the houses, right? We don't want that. If you can get them to be very happy, guess what? They're going to show up for you. If they like where they work, they're going to show up for you. You have to value them. You have to value their lives and their circumstances to a certain point. You obviously can't let them abuse you and walk all over you and take care of your niceness, take, take advantage of your niceness, right? You have to be able to provide both a company culture and a boss-like persona when you have the discipline to get a pull it back and be that parent where they respect you and they understand if they mess up, you have a check and balance system, you gotta let them know, hey, this behavior, whatever it was, was not okay. So I hope this is making sense, okay? Is this, are you guys feeling me tonight? <laughs> hey, Bridget. Me and Bridget getting on a call Wednesday, yay. All right, let's keep going. So advancement opportunities for staff. Do you talk about advancement with your company in the interview? If not, you should. You're always looking for your next team leader, okay? Your next team leader, your team trainer, your quality control manager, you want to attract people that want to grow with the company. You don't want people that just, I need to work right away, I need a job. As soon as anyone says that to you, throw that resume out. <laughs> don't, you don't want people like that. You're building an empire. You can't build an empire on fly-by-nighters and people that will just jump ship for another dollar an hour. You know how much a week that is? That's like $35 a week before taxes. Like that's ridiculous, right? So you want someone that's vested in, vested in with you, right? I'm gonna give you a tip. Never hire someone that says they are applying to several jobs and they just need a job because that means they're not looking for long-term work. That means they're probably broke as you know what and they're gonna get their phones turned off right and living who even knows where under a bridge right this has been going on a long time in their life you don't know what's going on 
So chances are they're not going to be vested. They're so broke, they need to follow the dollar, the money, or whatever. And so this isn't the person for you, okay? You really want someone that wants to grow with your company. You'll have much more success, much more success in retaining your people if they want to grow. So these management levels, when you create them, that's what's going to give you your time freedom. They will enable you to take a vacation and have your company still run and bring in money. Ask Gloria. Ask Gloria from North Carolina. She's one of my clients. She's been with me since the beginning of the year, and she only cleans when she has to maybe go check on a deep clean. Um, her and her family went away on a cruise for a week, and her company still ran. Why? Because she's a badass, and she created. She has a solo cleaning model, and they're all their own team leaders and quality control managers on their houses, and she ran with it. She went on vacation for a week on a boat. <laughs> she was able to do that. That's how you do it, ladies. That's how you do it. Okay? So you get to talk about advancement in your hiring ad. Talk about your levels of management. How you're looking for your next team leaders. Let them know there's room for advancement within your company. People want to know there's room for raises, when the raises are coming, right? And personal growth within a company they are applying for. So if you tweak these things, and you master these things, I guarantee you, you will have a better income and get more qualified people. I promise you, but you have to put in the work. It's work. This isn't, it's, it's nothing good ever comes easy. Managing people is the hardest, single most hardest thing you will need to learn. If you wanna have your time freedom and be on a boat like Gloria and her family, you need to master that. You need to master this. Is this all making sense? I think I lost people when I switched. It looks like I'll be sending out a lot of videos this week. <laughs> so if you are struggling in your company with retaining staff, hiring staff, training staff, we should have a chat. We can see what's going on for you in your business, see where the struggle is, because there's something going on, right? See where the disconnect is and fix it. That's what you guys have to do. You gotta fix it. People, oops, someone's buzzing me. The people that I work with, my clients, they're getting great results. They're learning how to hire. They're learning how to react. They're learning how to calm their energies when they have to deal with a chaotic situation. They're learning how to become better bosses. And this is crucial to your success. I have a six month ex ele um, elevate your cleaning business accelerator. I have a drop them up and scale. I have two going on right now. They're great ways to get help in your business. It includes a massive section on hiring and retaining talent for your cleaning business, a big section on social selling, packaging up your services, getting high paying clients, streamlining your processes, putting the right technology, because technology is gonna save you a ton of time if you implement it into your business and a ton of other things that you need to scale. Um, I have a few spots left for January. I have a few people graduating from the Drop Them Up and Scale Accelerator program moving into the mastermind. So we have a few. I have three pre-registers already for January, which means I'm only gonna have a couple of spots left until more people leave. So if you're interested in hearing more, type in the word chat or DM me. Um, happy to talk DM. I usually set up what's called a strategy call. It's about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Um, we see if the program is the right fit for you. I only work with people that are really ready and willing to commit. Um, because I want you all to get results. So I'm not going to take your money, right? I want to work with people that really want to make the change. Um, and that's where I think I am different. Um, so if you're interested in hearing more, let me know. Um, next Wednesday, I can do a training. I was planning on doing a training. Does everyone want a training next week? Uh, I know it's two days after Christmas. Um, if you can't get on live, I can also send you you know, send you a copy of it. So um, let me know what you think. Um, hi, Amber. Oh, I love Candace. I think, Amber, are you new to the group? I think you're new to the group. How do you know Amber? Are you from, um, are you from Indiana? Um, I don't know if you're from Indiana. I love, Candace is awesome. Candace is almost on um, the accelerator program and she's going to be moving into the ma um, mastermind program in February, I believe. So yay. Love to learn more about you. I'm glad to, glad that you're part of the group. 
Um, it's mostly women here. We have a few men here, but we're mostly we're mostly women here. Um, all right, you guys have an amazing Christmas. Can you believe? Oh, your friends. All right, cool. Do you, so do you guys work in the same area? Are you close to where she is? She's amazing. She doesn't know how amazing she is, but she's amazing. Um, but yeah, let me know if you're close. I answer these after anyways. I want you all to have an amazing, an amazing, amazing, amazing Christmas. Try not to work so hard. You're both in Indiana. Yeah, yeah, cool. Try and relax. We have a big, nice, relaxing weekend ahead of us. If you're not working on Saturday, doing Airbnbs, right? <laughs> Um, and I will see you next week. All right. Have a great evening, ladies. Bye.